session with Prophet Fanny Bukuride. It's a pleasure to meet you and um, do this broadcast. I'm especially excited because today I have a guest who is a son in ministry and a mighty man of God. Really, you need to hear this man. It is he's someone that I've known for a number of years and every time I've heard him, the word of God has been sharp in his mouth. And I'm trusting God that as we discuss and just um, talk to one another and also talk to you, that God will draw your attention to the things that he has been talking to us about and that your lives will never remain the same. So with me is Reverend Williams Okoyekwe. You are welcome to Times of Refreshing. Thank and you, actually, you are the first man of God <laughs> that we are bringing on this platform. So I should, I should clap for you. Uh, we are trusting God that um, the word of the Lord will be sharp. The word of the Lord will go as far as God wants it to go and that the lives of the people will be transformed. Now, for a while now, I've been um, talking on the hand of God. Because I had a revelatory encounter in December and the Lord showed me um, the summation of it was that we needed to prepare the body of Christ. That is a need for preparation for the things that are coming so that we, are, we know how to address them. And um, just looking at the church and also looking at um, the prophet of God's uh, rejoiner's book, uh, The Final Quest, where he also talked on the army you know, and the various division of the army. One of the things he said there is that you know, a bulk of the army were not even prepared. You know, they, we are clothes, and they, when danger was there, that some of them was, that would lead me to laugh, but they were giving the peace sign. You know, I laughed when I read the book, but really, when COVID-19 hit us, I saw that of a truth, we are not ready. So the Bible says in Joel chapter 2, that God is raising a mighty army, and really, that army is his church. But in my opinion, you know, I see that uh, we've not been able to define ourselves as the army of God. Can you try a little bit light on that? Okay. Um, what, what we've had for a very long time, it's church people um, with a more of need-based mentality where what we want, it's in forefront our needs are in front. Um, the army of God needs to understand that it is more about the Father's mandate okay. than our needs. It's more about the responsibility that we are called into than what we want. Okay. You see, that's one of the um, key differences when we begin to become need mentality, need based, we're pursuing after our own selfish yeah. will not the father's will and it's it's obvious now because now we are we are we are seeing that the people you thought had faith in god yeah. are shaken by this 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 whole circumstance mm -hmm. it's because we are not grounded in the fact that we are called for this work yeah we are called this work part, part of this work is that we are going to go into danger zones mm -hmm. we are afraid to go into danger zone now because we are not we're not well equipped so the army of God needs to understand that this is the Father's work. I go where the Father calls. Okay, let me cut you short. Who do you think is responsible for the way we are as the church? Is it the pastors or the people? <sighs> uh, we, we can never 100% take it away from the pastors. Okay. Ephesians talks about uh, the work of the fivefold ministry. Um, the fivefold ministry is to equip the saints. What the people are, is largely a product of what the pastors wow. have delivered. Wow. So um, that's why in the midst of all of this, we are still seeing sound people speak. Yeah. There are still sound believers on the street. Now, we are feeding from different streams. Yeah. So the streams we are drinking from tells our response in this last hour. Yeah. So I, I, I will blame pastors, I will blame people. There are pastors doing so well, but people are, you know, people respond Basically, there's this African mentality. Sometimes I feel that when we get to heaven, 
there has to be a different element for white people and for black people. Because we understand, we understand scriptures different, we understand gospel different. We, the way we are preached is so different. So I, I think pastors responsible, people responsible. Okay. Uh, and just to chip in, I, I believe that um, another factor that plays is the factor that we see in the parable of the sower where whenever the seed, you know, there are lots of pastors that labor and um, uh, the people just receive yeah. and then their response is wrong. Yeah. For some of them, because of the need consciousness, yeah. pastor is delivering the word <laughs> and all they are thinking of is after service, which money will I collect yes. from pastor? Yes. Right? And then for some, I mean, at times it can be shocking, you've spent like an hour plus, you've ministered, you've prayed and you've done everything. And then someone meets you at the end of the seven and they said, pray for me. So you are like, okay, so what just happened? Special prayer. Special How prayer. do we deal with that? <laughs> now, when we begin to make the people really understand what God has called them to, really understand that it's not about the pastor. The pastor doesn't have a special anointing or a special access to God. The access pastor has to God is the access they have to God. Wow. So once, once the people are well taught, then there must be the mindset that when a word comes on the altar, it is as good as done. You know, uh, uh, we, we, we had a lockdown and we were talking about impartation. And I told them, I said, many people feel that, yes, it's good hand must be laid on you. But many times, impartation comes from word. Yeah. I have faith in the word spoken. You know, scripture talks about a more sure word of prophecy. Mm. Uh, if, if you don't give me a prophetic word, I have a more sure word of prophecy. Yeah, yeah. So once we're going to build the people to understand that the word of God has everything you need, more than what I have to offer, then when I teach, you can always rely on what, where I came from, which is the word of God, than thinking that there's something special. And many times also we must understand that there's something special about that need to be con that, that contact. We can't, we can't remove it from <laughs> yes, it. Yes, yes, that's true, that's true. Well, if you look at Joel chapter 2, it gives us a, 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 a perfect glimpse of God's um, mind, mindset for the army. We see um, Joel define them as a great people, a strong people. You know, and the shocking thing Joel, Joel says here, the prophet Joel says, is that this army, we've not seen the kind, yeah. and when they are done and they've left, left the face of the earth, that we will not see their kind. But when reading Joel, I saw something that is really a source of um, concern to me. And let me just try to, to pick that. Uh, that's Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse, um, verse 8. Okay, starting, let me read from 7. He said, they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break ranks. The next one said, neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Now, you just raised an important point when you talked on impartation. You see in scriptures where Apostle Paul is talking to Timothy, and he said, I long to see you that I may impart. Yeah. So we see uh, the patriots when they want to um, go to be with the Lord, they call their sons, they bless them, and then they impart. So I believe that there's a place for impartation. But I'm seeing, uh, should I call it an error, you know, all over social media, I'm seeing a younger generation rising up, and oftentimes they stand on the point that Paul rebuked Peter. And they hit the fathers. At, at a rate that you are wondering, you know, it's like when you hear some of them talk, it's like the fathers have not done anything. But Joel tells us that we will not break ranks. So when we talk against the father, are we breaking ranks? Uh, the centurion said, I'm a man under authority. Are we coming under authority? Um, is it possible to receive impartation from somebody you speak against? Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Certainly it's not possible to receive impartation from someone you speak against. Uh, as, as far as you can speak against that person, you can drink from that person. Impartation has to do with, first of all, your heart for the person. The test Elijah went through when Elijah said, if you see me go, 
was a test of love. Because you will notice that at the end of the journey, before Elijah left, it was with cry Elisha came into that impartation. That cry wasn't, you know, the cry of, you know, uh, no, no, it's not bad, give me. No, it was a cry of, I will miss you. There's, there's, there's a part you have played in my life that no matter what I have, I will miss you. That thing comes from love. And many times because we don't understand the, 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 the work of love, that's where we speak against authority. Love has a way of covering. If I love my man of God, no matter what he says that I think is wrong, I, I have no right to speak about it. I have no right to even speak about it. How much more to come on Facebook to speak against him? I feel Facebook has given us a platform, giving people that didn't have um, what to say, platform to say what they like. Because the same people that talk like this don't have ministries, they don't have churches, they don't have people they submit to. They don't. If, if, you, if you are someone that is trained and well trained, you should understand how important the father's role is over our life. You may think you know more than them, but when a man has spent 30 years in ministry, 40 years in ministry, and you just come, you've done one year, and you think you've caught your revelation? You think you have something? No, 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 no. You can't play with time. Time, when it comes to ministry, time is important. When that kind of person spent 30 years doing the same thing, you see, there's something about these fathers, there's something about their consistency. They are doing the same thing over time. And here we are, five years after we have switched from grace to motivation, from motivation to relationship, from relationship <laughs> to deliverance, we can't even find where we are. Yeah. And you're talking against a man that for 30 years, he has been saying one Probably thing. Probably just the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, there are many of them that have just been saying one thing over the years. What has God, can the couple have been saying? Faith. Mm. Over the years, he comes back to that thing. What did Papa Hagen teach? You see, there's this consistency that these people have, that if we don't, if our generation, my generation, um, is not careful about it, we would, we would not be able to come into the richness of ministry like they did because for, for, for some, we, we may not even have enough time to stay on the stage mm. for God to, to, to do what he wants to do with us. We would have been cut off. It, 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 you see, so when it comes to this kind of matter, I like to talk about David and Saul. Yeah. David had every right to speak against Saul. But yet, at the death of Saul, David began to say, don't publish this. Mm, it's not yeah, a testimony yes, to the church. Yes, yes. When, when it comes to the Lord's anointed, there are some things we shouldn't publish, mm. some things we shouldn't say. Don't say, don't let, don't let them hear it. Mm. And until we tell ourselves that that's how it should be, mm. we won't go nowhere. We won't, be able to, we won't be able to get our generation to realize that the only way to transit from where we are to where these guys are, there must be a link. We must keep honoring them, honoring their work of faith, honoring their work of commitment to the ministry. We must keep honoring it, whether we like it or not, whether we think we know more than them, whether God has given us revelations deeper than what they have, we must understand that the fathers are foundations to what we are doing. I hope you know people will stone you for this. Oh, I'm ready to be stoned. Because um, some people believe that um, there's no accountability structure, that the fathers are supposed to be accountable. Okay, like during this lockdown, I've heard people say, the fathers have failed us, the fathers have failed us, the fathers have failed us. And I'm wondering, are we, not, <laughs> are we not fathers? Are we not also supposed to? Because you are saying, um, okay, uh, um, yesterday I was ministering online and I told them that I happened to be at the uh, 40th birthday celebration of Bishop Wedek, but although it was not celebrated like a party, it was done in Winners Chapel Radio back then. And the late Archbishop of Benzimi Dahusa, your papa, was, was there. So I was one of the privileged people to see him. You know, and at the age of 40, Uyelebo already had that structure. In fact, had done, Kaduna had come, mm. was already making impact in mm. Lagos. It was there I met Matiashimo Ulo for the first time. I know their age difference is just probably a couple of months or a year or so. So they are about the same age. At 40, and mm. I am about 40, <laughs> and I know your age. So, do we have a right to say the fathers, and some of us have crossed that 40s, and even at that, we've not even hit what they hit half, at the age. Half of it, we've not reached it. So, how do we train <laughs> these young ones on authority? I, be of the fathers? I believe we'll, we'll keep talking, we'll keep helping them understand that there is. There is no Joshua without Moses. There is no Timothy without Paul. There is no Yedipo without Idahosa. Mm. And 
until we keep that that link, we'll not be able to pass the baton well. Mm. It's it's like a relay where you're running from behind them. And no matter how fast or how slow you are, the important thing is about the baton being passed. Sometimes I think of it this way. How do I receive a baton from a generation I have rejected? Wow. Because that's how it will be. Now, when I see what this men did in their early 40s and compared to what we are doing in our 40s and with our noise you just realize that Facebook has exposed our weakness mm. there was no Facebook for them to show us how much impact they had at that age yeah. but Bishop Wiley tells me how the Miracle Center was built when I was 38 wow. I was 38, 39 when Miracle Center was built wow. I'm struggling to build my church. <laughs> so if, if you don't understand that, there's, there's a grace that is, that is passed on mm -hmm. that we must embrace. There is no new ministry we are creating. It's heritage. It's transfer. Mm -hmm. There's something coming from them that we must take mm -hmm. and run well. And build. Paul talk, talking about himself says he's a, he's a wise master builder. I say let every one of us be careful how we build. So the fathers must be careful what they're doing, how they're building. We also, that is receiving from them, must be careful how we receive from them. If not, there will be no sustenance. And if there's no sustenance, then there's going to be a time will come when it looks as if we are laying old foundations again. There are two scriptures that, uh, well, you know, I'm prophetic, so I usually look at scriptures from that uh, perspective. Uh, one of them is uh, Ephesians, where we are told we are admonished to honor our parents in the Lord. The Bible says it is the first commandment with a promise. The promise. Then if you go to Malachi, it also says that um, before Elijah will come, that God will send the spirit of Elijah, and he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers, else he will smite the earth with the cause. Now that it looks like there's a seemingly disconnect, the, the, the children are pointing accusing fingers at the father that you have not done enough. And the fathers are looking at the children and saying you are rebellious. Is it possible that this is going to result in days? Because when you don't honor your father, promise is yeah. is it possible that what the reason why we're seeing a certain level of death and people being caught short ministries not coming out is it possible Mommy, what, what i said just now that's that's what that's exactly what you're bringing out that for many of these people that are falling to this era they would not be able to stay as long as the fathers have stayed mm. not because god didn't will them to but by by living a life based on these principles, you will fall, they will fall short of that advantage. Many of them will not die, but you will see how that ministry will just come to an abrupt end. Mm -hmm. And it's not the will of God, it's that you have tampered with something that you shouldn't have tampered with. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, in concluding this um, chapter on the army of God, I just wish we can just go on and on and on. But there's a verse of scripture that um, it's also in my heart. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 9. It says that creation is groaning mm -hmm. and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yeah, uh, in this um, season that we have been, even with COVID-19, it's not even creation that I've been groaning. I, I, <laughs> looking at you, I've also grown like, you know, what, you know, I've heard, I don't know if you've heard statement like, where's John G. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> and... I've also heard people <coughs> said, uh, looking at Nigerian situation, saying, oh, we miss, in fact, a couple of weeks back, someone said, we miss Archbishop Benson in you know, and so we hear all of that. So creation is groaning, we ministers are groaning, everybody is groaning, but the Bible said, we, they are waiting for, when the deliverer needs deliverance, we are groaning, <laughs> but we are supposed to bring deliverance yes. to creation. Yes. So how, how, in practical set uh, terms, how do we, you know, move from just being a need-based church to the salt of the earth, to the light of the earth? Do you understand yeah. my question? Okay. Yeah. As we begin to change our focus from the flesh to the spirit, from the work of the flesh to being yielded to the spirit, 
we'll begin to see how that will begin to meet creation's need. When um, Paul was speaking to Romans about the whole creation waiting for the manifestation of the Son of God, oh, what, what that scripture um, uh, means to me is that there is, there is sons coming out into their real identity. Come, their, their sons are coming to know themselves. And as they begin to know themselves in light with what Christ has done, they'll be able to take the whole creation or bring healing to the creation. It's why, why, why are we calling for, 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 for the Gileaks? Why are we calling for the Dahosas? Why are we calling for these guys? It's that these guys, by reason of God's word imparted in their spirit, mm. came into a revelation. Yeah. And by that revelation of who they are in Christ, they shook their word. This time, we must all go back, pastors and members, pastors especially, teachers especially, go back to the equipping of the saints mm -hmm. so that the saints mm -hmm. can begin to understand that it's not about the fivefold ministry, it's about the saints. It's not about the pastor, the apostle, the teacher, the prophet, it is about the believer. So once the believer is trained properly, equipped properly, then the believer can wake up and realize that the absence of Christ in the flesh is me being present here. So if Christ is not here as it were in the flesh, I am here. What Christ can do, I can do. What Christ was supposed to do in this kind of case is what exactly I would do. What did I, what would have what that would have done? What would have Jilly done? You know, somebody was saying, How can the church be closed? No, no, no. For 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 me, uh, I, I get excited that, that the church, as it were, the four walls, that thing we call church. I'm seriously, um, like, I was excited about it because the believers needed to move from the wall to who they truly are mm. as the church. Mm. Mm. We needed to move from that thing, that, that four-wall church mentality mm. to it is me, it is me. So now the four-wall was closed, mm. but the church was oh, closed. Glory to God. As a matter of fact, the church was empowered mm. because all of a sudden, the church began to happen at home. Mm. I, I, I get parents calling and telling me that we spend time with our children, just mm -hmm. trying to teach them. They didn't do that before mm -hmm. because they felt the whole responsibility is a four world church. Mm -hmm. But now they're taking responsibility. Children at home leading praise and worship, yeah. children at home leading prayers. Yeah. Now we, we, are seeing, we are seeing the gift of God in this crisis. We are seeing what God is even doing with the crisis. Mm -hmm. So as we come back to church four words, we need to get back into the real work equipping the saints. Wow. Let believers get to know who they are wow. and function from that end. Wow, this, this is awesome. I believe and I know that you've been tremendously blessed. Um, just before we round off, uh, Reverend is going to be praying for us. But just as a recap, we are talking about the army of God and we're looking at the, the role of the fivefold. And part of what Reverend has shared with us today is that the fivefold needs to shift in its, in its approach of raising the church. No longer should we raise a need-based church, a need-centered church, a, a church that is totally dependent on pastor pray for me, pastor fast for me, pastor give for me. Do you know, pastor, I saw something on, uh, online two days ago, and I, I just had to like it. The lady said, she said, if online church is a reason for you not to pay your tithe and offering, then it means you didn't get it at all. Oh, I, you know, somewhere I felt, why is it I'm not the one that wrote this thing? Because she captured, captured it well. Yes. That really, yes. God is yes. showing us yes. our level. Yes. That some people have not given for the past four weeks because, like you said, no more, no more world more church. church. But if I know that I am the yes. church, I'm a priest, yes. and it's the responsibility of a priest to always give, I just do it online. And even do more. More. Because Isaac sowed in, in famine. famine. So this is even the best season for us to sow yeah. our seed. So we're saying that um, we have a responsibility as a fivefold to equip the saints that we must move into training them, teaching them to be responsible for themselves, pray for themselves, fast for themselves, and even beyond that, see that, you know, uh, in, in my ministry, we call it Church on the Street. I know you have, you know, outlets like that. 
um, the, the, the world there is church without walls. Yes. We're taking the church from, from the, the four walls. walls out there. Yes. You know, that is what God is demanding from us. When we begin to do that, we will be the true light that God has created us to be and will be the true salt that God has created us to be. And at the end of the day, we will stand in our place to liberate creation. So I am... I, um, in my spirit, I see a new church arise. Yes. A church of glory. Yes. A church of power. Yes. A church that will no longer be saying, where are the John G. Lakes? But mm. they will say, when, they, when, when Isaiah said, uh, who will go for us? And I said, here am I. Here am I. So when someone is saying, I'll get the Dahosa, he said, oh, we well, are well, 50,000 of the Dahosa. The John G. Lake, we have 200,000. Yes. Oh, where is uh, Smith Wigglesworth? We have the Hagens and all of that because we are honoring our fathers and we are transiting into oh, the glory army of God, God and God. we are being filled you know with the presence of God and we are going to turn our world they turned it upside down we are turn, turning it right, right side, side off, off. Yes. hallelujah so just as we round off this broadcast we want our reverend to pray for us and just pray for just bless them just release God's word over them praise there's God. no distance in the praise spirit God. praise God, God. Praise God. God. as I was speaking as I was 16, 61 it says arise I hear that word strong before my mother began to talk about we getting up. Mm. And in this hour, the church is truly rising. Amen. The army of God is truly rising. Amen. We are taking our responsibility. Amen. And we are entering the word Amen. and we are bringing healing and succor to our word. Amen. We are coming as a great light and darkness is giving way as we Amen. come. Right now, as we pray, we speak healing. Amen. We speak healing to minds. We Amen. speak healing to body. Amen. We speak for restoration. Amen. People coming back. People Amen. that have lost the faith, lost their work with God, they come back. They come back in this hour. They come back and they come into a mighty work. We pray for those of them that have offended in words, spoken against the Father. We are praying that, that, that the mercy of God will speak for us all. Amen. We speak on their behalf. We ask for mercy. Amen. We ask for mercy for my generation. I ask for mercy for my generation. And I ask that, oh Lord, in our time, you will use us, you will, you, you will raise men from among us Amen. that will speak as voices, even as you have done in time past. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for Amen. answers to prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen.